Hi students, welcome to Needspire, a space where we build your concepts and you convert them into skills. This is Dr. Farkhanda Sofi and I've been one of you a few years back and now I'm about to complete my MBBS from one of the reputed medical colleges in the country. I'm glad to offer you with some guidance regarding the NEET exam and I hope it helps you to learn quickly and easily. Also, I will be guiding you for your board exams. I'm here to motivate you and teach you in a way that learning becomes fun. Now I know the level of anxiety and demotivation that has set in since the beginning of this pandemic and it's very draining. But I just want to tell you that your time is precious and in a few years when you look back at it you just don't want to regret anything. So what I've done in this series of lectures is that I have put a picture from the book of the chapter that we are studying in the particular video on the side of your screen so that we can thoroughly go through the book and we do not miss anything. Simultaneously I've also tried to give you a bit of additional information in terms of questions that have been asked in the previous years and what all you need to know about your subject apart from the book. So let's get studying and building our concepts stronger day by day. We'll be starting from human physiology and our first topic is digestive system. So digestive system. Now as we know food is one of the basic requirements of all living organisms. We know that the components of the food are proteins, carbohydrates and fats. Also vitamins and minerals are required in minute quantities. Then we talk about water. We take water prevents us from dehydration and also has a role in various metabolic processes in the body. Now what is digestion? Digestion it is a process of conversion of the complex substances that we eat in the form of food because they can't be absorbed as they are. So we need to break them down into simpler substances and then they can be absorbed and assimilated throughout our body. So digestion is the conversion of this complex food substance to a simple absorbable form that is digestion. The food we take is broken down into simpler substances and then it gets ready for absorption. This process is known as digestion. Now digestive system comprises of an elementary canal and a few digestive glands. Now elementary canal is made up of first structure that is mouth. The first structure that our food gets in contact with is mouth. Buccopharyngeal chamber. And what is this buccopharyngeal chamber? It comprises of the oral vestibule, the oral cavity or the buccal cavity and the pharynx. Okay. So here, this is the mouth of the individual and this common passage here is the pharynx and this is the oral cavity which has teeth and tongue and palate and all of that. We'll study about that. Then the food goes into the esophagus, which is right here. The muscular tube through which the food passes is the esophagus. After the esophagus, the food enters the stomach. Then it goes into the intestines. Now we have the small intestines and the large intestines. We'll talk about it later. Apart from the elementary canal, which is two openings, the anterior one being the mouth and the posterior opening being the anus, we also have some digestive glands in the digestive system. These are salivary glands, gastric glands, which are located in the stomach, intestinal glands in the intestines, liver, which is the largest exocrine gland of the body, and pancreas. So this is the outline of the digestive system, which we have to study about one by one in this whole chapter. Now, let's talk about mouth first. The mouth contains, as I said, it consists of vestibule and an oral cavity. Okay. Now, what is the vestibule? Vestibule is nothing, but it is a space between the gums of the teeth and the cheeks. The space between the gums and the cheeks is known as vestibule. And it is also known as tobacco chamber. Why? You must have seen the tobacco users. What do they do? They put the tobacco in this space. That is the vestibule. Now, mouth also comprises the oral cavity. 
The oral cavity has a number of teeth. It has a tongue. It has teeth, tongue, and a palate. Okay. Now we'll study about these structures also. Firstly, let's see what a palate is. Palate, it is the roof of the oral cavity. Now it is divided into two parts, hard palate and the soft palate. The hard palate is the anterior part of the palate, which is made up of two bones. The bones that make the hard palate are maxilla and palatine bones. You need to remember this. This has been asked in the exam. And the soft palate, it is a soft tissue and it has an extension posteriorly, a finger like extension which hangs down, which is called as uvula. Okay. Also, in the soft palate, in the lateral aspect of the soft palate, we have two lymph nodes, big lymph nodes, which are called as palatine tonsils. Okay. This is about palate. Then comes the tongue. Now, tongue is a freely movable muscular organ which is attached to the floor of the mouth. It is a muscular organ attached to the floor of the mouth. Which is attached to the floor of the mouth by a structure which is called as frenulum. It is also written in the book. And it has been asked also. It is a question. So, what, what is a frenulum? It is a structure that gives the attachment to the tongue with the floor of the oral cavity. Now, the anterior part of the tongue we know is free, while the posterior part is connected to a bone. This anterior part, this part is the anterior part. This is freely movable. And this posterior part, it is connected to a bone, which is known as hyoid bone okay posterior part is connected to hyoid bone now the functions of the tongue first of all it is a movable structure we know it helps in the chewing of the food in the mastication of the food second most important function of the tongue is that it has got taste buds we can taste any food we eat through these taste buds now there are different types of taste buds papillae or the taste buds so we have different types of papillae on the tongue Let's see those. What are these papillae? Look. First of all, these large circular papillae, which are arranged in a V-shaped manner, these are known as circumvallate papillae. Okay? Circumvallate papillae. Then you can also see these leaf-like structures on the side of the tongue. These leaf-like structures on the side of the tongue, these are foliate papillae okay then these papillae which are in the front these little papillae these are known as fungiform papillae these are the types of papillae okay and then we have these little minute structures which are distributed scattered all over the tongue these are known as filiform these are the smallest papillae so by now we know smallest papillae filiform Largest papillae, circumvallate, and taste buds are present in the fungiform papillae and the circumvallate papillae. Okay, done. So, this is about the tongue. And also, I want to tell you that the V shaped, this V shaped where the circumvallate papillae are arranged, there is a groove, V shaped groove. And in the midline of this groove, in the midline, there is a pit. And this pit is known as foramen cecum here okay this is called as foramen cecum now next we will study about the teeth so all of us know that an adult human has 32 teeth in the mouth okay now we have a dental formula what is a dental formula because we have different types of teeth we have dental formula but before going to the dental formula i want to tell you that in human being, first the origin of the teeth, it is ectomesodermal. It is ectomesodermal. So it is ectodermal as well as mesodermal. Some structures will be the part will be formed by 
ectoderm, while as some structures will be formed by mesoderm. So this is about the origin. Then I want to tell you that there are three features, three basic features in human beings in teeth. What are these three features? Thecodont, diphyodont, and heterodont. Okay. Now, what does all this mean? This is very simple. Thecodont is nothing but when all of the teeth have their own respective sockets. When all teeth have their own respective sockets, this arrangement is called as thecodont. Okay. Now, diphyodont is nothing but when two sets of teeth are acquired in a lifetime. Okay. As you all know, first we have temporary teeth and then we have permanent teeth. So we have two sets of teeth. The temporary teeth fall off and then the permanent teeth come. So this arrangement is known as diphyodont. Now talking about heterodont. What is heterodont? As the name suggests, it is when different types of teeth are present. Different types of teeth. Like there is no one structure of the teeth. There are many types of teeth present. And in human beings, there are four types of teeth. So by now, from here, the four types of teeth comes the dental formula. Because these four types of teeth are arranged in a particular fashion, which is known as a dental formula. Now in adults, the dental formula is 2, 1, 2, 3. And what does this signify? So we take the half of the mouth and we take a division between the upper and the lower jaw and in the half upper jaw we have two one two three and in the half the lower jaw we have two one two three now what is two one two three this is in terms of this arrangement incisors canines premolars and molars these four types of teeth we have arranged in two one two three formula okay now look here this is the diagram which you want to study see the first set of first two teeth these are the incisors and look how they are shaped. The shape of the incisors, okay? Then the third tooth, it is the canine. So look at the shape of the canine, how it is placed, how it is present. Then we have premolars, next two teeth. These are the premolars. And finally, we have three molars, okay? This is how molars are present. Okay, so we have incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Now, according to the dental formula, which I was telling you, in adults, there is 2, 1, 2, 3 fashion. But in children, it is different. Okay, in children, the dental formula is not 2, 1, 2, 3. In children, the dental formula is 2, 1, 0, 2. Okay, 2, 1, 0, 2, which means... There is an incisor, sorry, there are two incisors, there is one canine, there is no premolar, and then there is a molar. Question that has come is when temporary molars shed, because temporary molars are present, when they shed down, their sockets are filled by premolars, not molars. Their sockets are filled by premolars, and for the permanent molars, new sockets appear. Okay, so this is a question, and you have to know this. Now, talking about the structure of the tooth. First of all, we divide the tooth into three parts. The crown, neck, and the root. Okay? Here, the crown, neck, and the root. This part here is the crown. This is the neck. And this whole part is the root. Now, the crown. What is the crown made up of? The crown is made up of a very hard substance. This white substance. It is very, it's the hardest substance in the body. And it is known as enamel. Okay. It is the hardest material in the body. Now, enamel is ectodermal. This you have to know. Enamel is the part which is ectodermal in origin. Remember this. And the cells that make up this enamel are called ameloblasts. This is very important. This has been asked many times. The cells which form the enamel are known as ameloblast cells. And enamel. It has mostly inorganic composition. That means it has salt in it. 90% has inorganic composition. Then is the second part, which is the dentine. Dentine is the main part of the tooth. The tooth is formed of mainly the dentine. Here it is. See, 
this one this whole thing is dentine okay this here now the dentine also surrounds this cavity you can make out this red cavity this is the pulp cavity okay and it is wholly surrounded by dentine or dentine okay the dentine is secreted by another type of cells which are called as odontoblasts this has also been asked this is very important so dentine is formed by odontoblast cells okay now what is pulp cavity the pulp cavity is a cavity which contains soft connective tissue like um, blood capillaries nerve fibers etc all the you can see nerve fibers and the blood vessels are going through this cavity which is called the pulp cavity okay so this was the structure of the teeth now the next part of the elementary canal that we are studying will be esophagus esophagus is a thin long muscular tube which starts from the mouth and goes down through the neck thorax and abdomen into the j shaped bag which is a stomach the only function of the esophagus is to pass the food down to the stomach it has no digestive glands it has only mucus glands present okay no digestive glands this is an important line no digestive glands are present in the esophagus then only the mucosal glands are present now the next structure that the food passes into is the stomach it is the widest part of the elementary canal okay the widest part of the elementary canal is the stomach it is a j shaped bag which is distensible okay now the parts of the stomach as we can see in this diagram esophagus entering into the stomach and this is the j shaped bag that we are talking about now the parts of the stomach there are different parts of the stomach this is the fundus the upper portion then this is the cardiac part this whole part is the cardiac part okay this the rest of the part this one is known as the body and towards the end of the stomach this part is the pyloric part and here it enters into the duodenum okay now the stomach how many orifices does the stomach have in total it has two orifices one is the cardiac orifice which is right here and another is the pyloric orifice which opens into the duodenum now these two orifices are surrounded by sphincters the cardiac orifice is surrounded by the lower esophageal sphincter and the pyloric orifice is surrounded by the pyloric sphincter which regulate the food that enters from the esophagus to the stomach and from the stomach to the duodenum okay now the stomach is also covered by a layer of peritoneum peritoneum is a layer it is a fat layer that covers the that covers almost all the organs of the elementary canal along with the stomach and what does this peritoneum contain it contains fat and lymph tissues okay now stomach as you can see is present on the left side of the abdominal cavity so the curves these curves this curve and this curve these also have names this curve is the greater curvature as you can see it is greater than dia and this one is known as the lesser curvature now what we have to study about are the gastric glands or the glands present in the stomach okay there are multiple tubular glands that are found by the epithelium in the stomach the in, epithelium in the stomach invaginates like this at places and these form the glands gastric glands now the gastric glands have different types of cells that we have to study about four types of cells are present in gastric glands the first one mucus cells number 2 oxyntic or parietal cells then the chief or peptic cells and lastly entero endocrine cells okay what is the function of these cells mucus cells what do you understand 
by the name mucus cells that they secrete mucus and mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach by by the action of acid because hcl is the acid which is present in the stomach so the lining of the stomach is protected through this mucus next we have the parietal cells parietal cells or auxentic cells they secrete intrinsic factor what do they secrete intrinsic factor and this intrinsic factor is important in the absorption of vitamin b12 okay so they secrete intrinsic factor and the second most important thing that is secreted by these auxentic or parietal cells is hcl which is an acid which is very important it maintains the acidic medium to the stomach it helps in converting the inactive enzymes into active enzymes and it also kills the bacteria which are present in food bolus okay now the chief or the peptic cells what is their function the chief or the peptic cells they secrete enzymes like lipase gastric lipase okay pepsinogen proreenin and gastric amylase how do these enzymes act we'll study when we'll study about the digestion of the food okay just now you just have to remember that these chief or peptic cells secrete enzymes like lipase pepsinogen proreenin amylase and the enteroendocrine cells there are many cells like g cells d cells or ec cells what do they secrete the g cells secrete g for gastrin they secrete gastrin which is a hormone that stimulates the secretion of the gastric juice d cells they secrete d you will remember it by decreasing they secrete somatostatin which decreases the gastric juice okay then the enterochromaffin cells or the enteroendocrine cells they secrete serotonin and histamine serotonin is vasoconstrictor while as histamine is a vasodilator we will study about all of this in the coming lecture so this was about the gastric glands and about their cells okay so the next part of the alimentary canal is the small intestines okay now after the food enters the stomach and it is digested partially in the stomach now it enters the small intestine Now the small intestine is divided into three parts. The first part is known as duodenum, second part is known as jejunum, and the third part is known as ileum. Here you can see this first part, the purple part, is the duodenum. Then this green part, this coiled part, the green one, this is the jejunum, and finally this whole part, which enters into the large intestine, is the ileum. so these three are the parts of the small intestine duodenum jejunum ileum also an important feature of the small intestine is there are very really deep folds present in the mucosa deep folds present in mucosa of the small intestine which are known as plicae circularis okay second villi and microvilli these features all of these three things plicae circularis villi and microvilli are responsible for increasing the surface area of the small intestine increasing the surface area for the small intestine for absorption of the digested food okay now comes the large intestine in the large intestine anatomy is like this it is a very beautiful diagram the first part is the cecum this yellow little part is the cecum then this part of the colon which is going upwards is the ascending colon then this horizontal part is known as the transverse colon and this part coming down is known as descending colon so cecum ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and the s-shaped part of the colon is the sigmoid colon then this is the reservoir for the feces which is the rectum and this is the anal canal through which the ns opens into the outside okay so this is an anatomy of the large intestine now the large intestine where the large intestine meets the small intestine right here this part this this will be the ileum and this is the cecum so this junction is known as 
iliocecal junction this is the iliocecal junction and it is also guarded by a valve which is known as the iliocecal valve okay another thing this appendix it is a blind loop like structure it is a blind structure which is a vestigial organ we don't know the function of this now the structure of the colon we have these three ribbon like bands which you can see these are known as tinea coli then we have these pouch like structures which are known as hostrations all of these things also serve the same purpose of increasing the surface area to increase the absorption of the digested food okay so this was about the structure of the elementary canal also about the anus the anus contains two sphincters the internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter this you need to remember that the internal anal sphincter is involuntary in nature while as the external one is voluntary in nature okay this is a question and this has been asked now we have to study about the histology of the elementary canal that is what the wall of elementary canal is made up of okay the wall of the elementary canal is made up of four layers from outer to inner the first one is serosa muscularis submucosa and the mucosa these are the four layers from out, outside to inside that the wall of the elementary canal is made up of now serosa it is the outermost layer it is a covering of the wall then comes the muscularis which is which is again composed of two layers an inner circular layer of muscles and an outer longitudinal layer of muscles an inner circular and an outer longitudinal you can see here this is this one in green is the outer longitudinal layer while as this in purple is the inner circular layer of the muscles then another layer is the submucosa and the fourth layer is the mucosa the submucosa it is a loose connective tissue which contains blood vessels and nerves while as the mucosa it is the innermost layer which contains the secretory and the absorptive cells that means it contains glands which secrete many things like i told you for example mucus enzymes intrinsic factor and all of that and it has an it is also an absorptive surface that absorbs whatever food we eat also the mucosa is thrown into several folds like i told you for example villi which increase the surface area and hence increase the absorption okay the folds in the intestines are called villi now we'll study about the structure of the villi the structure of the villi is see this is the fold of the mucosa here this is the fold of the mucosa and these are the little structures known as villi which increase the surface area for the absorption and these little invaginations or these small spaces are known as crypts or crypts of liberkin also in the core of the villi are the artery the vein the capillaries and the lymph vessel which is known as lacteal okay so this is the structure of the villi now some important terms like bruner's glands okay these are special glands which are present in the submucosa of the duodenum this is important and has been asked bruner's glands are present in the submucosa of the duodenum then panet cells panet cells are found in the mucosal layers of crypts of liberkin in the duodenum i told you these are the crypts of liberkin here the small slit like space is beneath the villi the crypts of liberkin okay so these are found in the mucosal layers of the crypts of liberkin of 
jejunum these are unicellular glands mind you the blue, bruner's glands are multicellular this has also been asked okay so these are the unicellular glands and they synthesize lysozymes and defensin which provide immunity okay the third important st structure is the payer's patches the payer's patches are small lymph nodes in mucosa of small intestine and these are maximum in the ileum okay maximum found in the ileum these are small lymph nodes in the mucosa of the small intestine and we also call them intestinal tonsils okay they also provide immunity these are called intestinal tonsils the last thing about the anatomy of the elementary canal is the nerve supply what is the nerve supply of the elementary canal we have two plexus plexus is nothing but bunch of nerves okay so we have airbags plexus and we have mesnerves plexus the airbags nerve plexus is also known as myentric plexus why myentric plexus because it is present between the outer longitudinal and the inner circular muscles okay between the outer longitudinal and the inner circular layer of the muscles is present the airbags plexus so naturally the function is the muscle coordination okay this plexus helps in the coordination of the muscle activity now the mesner's nerve plexus it is found between the circular muscles and the submucosa okay circular muscles the inner circular layer and the submucosa okay and the function is to control the secretions so that's it about the first part of the digestive system in the next video we learn about how these all organs function and what is the physiology of the digestive system and we'll also learn about the liver and the pancreas and we'll also practice some mcqs regarding this chapter so see you in the next lecture thank you for watching